the ULM Warhawks shock the JMU Dukes. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. I'm going to move the camera here a little bit, or the computer, as it turns out to be. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. All right. Uh, we will go over all the games, not many, right? There were six total with Georgia State and Georgia Southern off. And Texas State uh, beat Troy on uh, Thursday. So only five games to go over so we can go in-depth on a lot of them. And then I'm going to go off on a tangent on game management at the end. But what a huge victory for ULM to defeat uh, JMU. I didn't think they were going to do it, to be honest with you. I didn't think that they would score 21 points. I mean, I thought it would really be... Kind of a 37 to 10 ball game, 34 13. I did tell somebody at work that I was going to actually bet on JMU, and it certainly looked like that was going to be a good bet when it started off with a touchdown on their first possession and then Aiden Armenta throwing an interception. Uh, and yet that's where the game changed because ULM holds JMU to a field goal and making it 10 0 instead of 14 0. The Monroe defense then started clamping down. And I don't think we can undersell the job that it did on uh, that it did on Alonza uh, Barnett uh, the third. He has been spectacular this year, certainly the last couple of ball games, responsible for 13 touchdowns. Uh, he had five passing touchdowns against. Carolina, he had five passing touchdowns against Ball State. He ran it in a few times. So he had 13 touchdowns in his last two games. He was responsible for one rushing touchdown in this game. He's had a fantastic couple of weeks, not so much against that ULM defense. He was under pressure all night long, kind of pedestrian numbers, 20 out of uh, 47, 251 yards, uh, no touchdowns or interceptions in the air. Again, he did. Let's see what he ran for. Um, Let's see if we can find that out quickly. Uh, He did run for, he did run for a touchdown, 15 carries, 49 yards. But remember, that has a lot to do with the sacks uh, as well. And then all of a sudden, ULM just started uh, chipping away, chipping away, and chipping away. And they got back uh, in uh, the ball game. Uh, they did get Amon Hardy with a nice 38-yard run to jumpstart the comeback. But even that was late in the second quarter. That was less than six minutes to go. So, you know, they did not score for more than one and a half quarters. And yet, they were still only trailing 10 nothing. Hardy's touchdown made it 10-7. to And then, really, really probably, it's got to be the turning point of, of the game where ULM's defense holds JMU but we're muffing a punt, all right? A lot of people don't think you should be fielding punts, but when you're running full speed, you should definitely not be fielding a punt. I will say on a side note, if he catches the punt, he may have a lot of room because I'm not sure there was anybody on that sideline uh, for JMU. Nonetheless, don't muff the punt, uh, but they did, and then two plays later, you get the scoop and score. So instead of it being... A 17 to 7 ball game at half, or even a 13 to 7 ball game at half in favor of JMU. It's now a 14 10 ball game at half in favor of ULM. Daniel Knutson with that 82 yard a fumble a return with just a minute 31 left uh, in the half. Give JMU uh, credit for not getting down on themselves, getting in position for a 39-yard field goal to make it a 14 a 13 ball game. Teams held scoreless in the second in, in the third quarter I should say, but the big one was really coming out to begin the second half and ULM gets the ball to begin the second half. They go seven plays and out, but then they held JMU to five plays and out. And that was a big. All right. That is uh the big one because 
JMU thinks they got a little bit of momentum, right? They get the field goal. They get a stop. They're going to go down and take the lead. And they didn't. Uh, and then, you know, eventually ULM gets that touchdown to go up 21-13. Uh, JMU responds, pulls within two, has to go for two, uh, and comes up empty. And then uh, almost another turning point in the game, Armenta with a shovel pass to a running back who was not ready for it. And thank goodness, if you're from ULM, for instant replay, because it appeared that JMU, in fact, it was called an interception on the field, and you, you honestly had to really slow it down to see that the ball hit the ground. You can understand why that play, right? I'm, I don't like complaining too much about the officiating, but I do. Um, but you can see how why on that play it was called an interception. Uh, but it was overturned, and eventually ULM, you know, punts it away with very little time remaining. And you know, JMU not really going down the field, right? Well, what do I care if you throw an interception? With like, you know, 40 seconds left or whatever it was, 30 seconds left. I mean, you got to go downfield. The little five yard out ain't helping. You know, we're not dumping it off right now. We're not coming back. We don't really care about second down at this point in time, right? There's not three minutes left. When did they get the ball back? And this kind of goes into my, you know, they got the ball back with 33 seconds left. This got to go back to game management. I just, I don't understand some of these things. You know, when you're supposed to force it, when, <laughs> when you need a field goal and 33 seconds left, and you're inside your 10-yard line, you're at the 14-yard line. That's when you force it. All right? I, I, you know, we'll get to second down. No, I don't care. You throw an interception at that point in time down the field, you throw an interception. You got to try and make a play. Uh, so I don't understand five yards and outs. Uh, really great job by Bryant Vincent and his coaching staff. Uh, that's a huge win. They are 4-1. and one. They do not make it look pretty. Don't make any, you know, bones about it right? Um, we say this all the time. It's not gymnastics. It's not um, boxing. It's not diving, right? We're not being judged. I mean, we are ranked sometimes when that the case, but you know, win is a win and ULM does it with defense. Uh, they put up enough points in this one, which I didn't think they were going to do. Uh, and they come away with apparently their biggest game since the bowl game in 2012. First time they're four and one since 1993. I'm getting, you know, Text messages from higher ups over at ULM already looking forward to the Louisiana matchup, which could be daunting. And oh my goodness, we could have a huge crowd for that one if those two are in a collision course uh, for the Sun Belt West Championship. Uh, here's the first step, though. <clears throat> Can't take your foot off the pedal. They have Southern Miss at home. And although Southern Miss played okay against the Cajuns, uh, especially on defense. Um, you can't, you can't have a letdown, right? And that's easily a letdown game, right? It's what Southern Miss one and four, one and five, one and four. And, you know, they're four and one and JMU was four and oh, we're going to beat them in our sleep. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. All right. Don't mess around here because ULM has a shot at what might be a special season. Um, Quickly going over these the schedules, right? This is not the toughest of all schedules. Um, huh. uh, they get Southern Miss at home. Then they're at South Alabama, and we still don't know about South Alabama. We'll get to them later. They're at Marshall. Uh, I'm not sure we know about Marshall either, but they had a nice win over App State. They get Texas State at home. That's huge. That's November 9th. Then what could be a very interesting ball game? Who knows where they'll be at that time? They're actually going to the Auburn Tigers. Auburn will be favored by how much I don't know because Auburn's not very good at all. They are on the road at Arkansas state and then they host the Cajuns uh, to wrap it up a couple of days after Thanksgiving. So uh, there's a ton of football left to play. They're having a sensational start to the season. Uh, it could even get better. They should be five and one with a win over Southern, Mi uh, Southern Miss and three and zero in the Sun Belt. Then they go to South Alabama and then they host Texas state. Huge, huge football down the stretch for uh, for ULM. And congratulations to the Warhawks. Did see attendance. Someone said it was 20,000. Unfortunately, kind of like when you're seeing games at the old Cajun field, if you will, you're looking across and you're not seeing a whole lot of people there. Sometimes when the students are there, it fills up a corner of the stadium. Um, I guess all the fans were on the Warhawk side, but it would be nice to see a relatively full 
uh, Malone House of Pain Stadium this weekend against Southern Miss. All right, let's take a time out. We'll come back. We got to do, well, we're going to do Cajuns, Marshall, and Coastal coming up uh, next. We'll wrap it up with Arkansas State and that game management, which I am still confused over. Uh, but we will do that next, right after I tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows how knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resource to hire. Right now, 2.5 small businesses, 2.5 million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. That's LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sun Belt, your team every day. Let's talk about the Raging Cajuns. Kind of a workmanlike effort and, and poor Southern Miss. You guys, you know, I, I cover the Cajuns, so certainly a little homer there, but I'm a big fan of the fighting Will Halls. And they've just struggled uh, at quarterback. Tayron Ranker not playing all that well. Um, all of 15 to 21 wasn't bad, but like 140 yards is not great, Bob. Um, their offensive line is bad. They, you know, the Cajuns were in the backfield all game long, and yet this was just a 23 to 13 ball game. Um, Cajuns actually, they get out to a, I thought they got out to a, uh, nope, just 10 nothing game, 10 7, then 17 7. And 17-13 uh, at half. A um, couple of things that I noticed, right? The fake punt was a great call by Will Hall. And the lineman did hold uh, the Cajun. I'm not sure he had to, though. I think the punter would have gotten the first down. A much smaller game than he may have had. But I think he would have gotten the first down. And then later on, like shortly thereafter, there was a holding on the Cajuns. They basically tackled the running back coming out of the backfield. And no call there. And that's what Will Hall was flipping out about, um, you know, some good play calls that just were one wasn't executed properly. And one was not called, uh, as it should have been. Um, Cajuns first time they have won in 31 years since, what do I get? 1990, uh, three was the last time the Cajuns beat Southern Miss. And the last time they did it in Hattiesburg was 1989. Uh, it was a dominating performance defensively from the Cajuns. I mean, statistically, this game is not close. You try to wonder why it was a, a four point or a yeah or a ten point ball game. Cajuns had four hundred ten yards to one hundred seventy seven. The Cajuns rushed for one hundred eighty eight yards. Southern Miss had one hundred seventy seven total, and Southern Miss had a turnover. Although that was at the end of the ball game. That was at the end of the game. Uh, Cajuns held the ball 41, 35 to 1825. So I don't really know how this game was not as nearly as much as a blowout, uh, as it probably should have been the way those stats, uh, line up, but somewhere along the way, I guess the Cajuns were satisfied with just running the football and, uh, playing defense. Although I think they, to be honest with you, should have run it more. And I can't stand throwing it down the line of scrimmage can't stand throwing it 15 yards across the field and hoping someone misses your guy. If you want to do a swing pass where you're going to get at least four or five yards, that's one thing. Uh, but when you're on one hash and you're throwing it beyond the other hash towards the other sideline, I, I, I don't like that play call at all. And they do a lot of that. Um, we'll get to the game management uh, in a little bit. But the Cajuns with a win, uh, they're four and one. They are two and oh in. The Sun Belt? No, I don't have that right. They're one and zero in the Sun Belt, uh, and they get App State at home. And I believe, uh, as you know, Cajuns do. And I'm here talking about the people rather than the school. 
uh, the Cajuns will come together and end up making a huge donation and help out everybody <clears throat> in uh, in Boone, North Carolina, or as many people as they can, because that's what the Cajun Nation does. All right, they will make sure that they are taken care of um, with either supplies or or finances. Uh, I know UL, the school, is going to do as much as they can to help make awareness, and um, they'll probably present some sort of check uh, at the ball game. Uh, all right, Dave Schultz, lockdown son, about your team every day. I also need to say this. I'll say this. All right. If the Cajuns are going to go in and beat Texas State, heck, if the Cajuns are going to go into Monroe and beat ULM, they're going to have to play better. All right. That was not the best effort from the Cajuns. I'll say the same thing that I said about Texas State. It was a little bit uneven. Although those stats show a different story, um, they did not dominate on the scoreboard as they should have. All right. And again, some of that play calling is uh, really interesting. All right. Um, but the Cajuns come away with a win. Uh, again, it's not gymnastics, it's not diving, uh, but um, they need to play better if they're going to win uh, the West. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team uh, every day. Uh, Marshall with an interesting 52-37 a win. Uh, Stone Earl was supposed to be the quarterback for Marshall, but it was Braylon Braxton, and they just kind of ran the football. Although Braylon Braxton had a pretty good day passing. He was 8 out of 14. He completed 8 passes for 129 yards. What did I say? Um, hey, Rodemaker completed 15 passes for like 140 yards, something like that, right? <laughs> so he, uh, you know, Braylon played okay and scored and threw for three touchdowns uh, in the air. He also ran it 15 times for 140 yards and uh, two touchdowns. That was the big thing is that um, Charles Huff kind of threw a curveball to everybody, told him Stone Earl was going to start and then didn't. Uh, Braylon Braxton was told either Thursday or Friday that he was going to start. And Charles Huff said, I just wanted to throw a curveball. And I don't know if it worked or not. I mean, somewhere along the way, you got to make the adjustments, right? It's, once the guy comes out and plays, you know, you got to adjust. And App State did not adjust. And, you know, offensively, App was okay, but they were behind all game long. Joy Aguilar, uh, 26 of 44, 293, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Maybe, just maybe, Marshall has turned things around, all right? Uh, A.J. Turner, 12 carries, 65 yards. Jordan Houston, 6 carries, 35 yards. Uh, Jordan Houston also had one reception uh, for 75 yards and a touchdown. Chuck Montgomery, uh, two catches and a touchdown. In fact, Marshall threw it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different receivers. Only Chuck Montgomery had more than one catch, <laughs> and that was two. Uh, Cade Robinson, a good ball game for App State, eight catches, 94 yards, but it was Dalton Stroman with the two touchdown uh, receptions. Um, they they couldn't run it because they were behind most of the ball game. They did run it for 180 yards and scored uh, three touchdowns. Imani Marshall had the two scores. App State heading in the wrong direction. Now they get the Cajuns. Um, I understand things are improving slightly in lovely Boone, North Carolina, and one day, again, it will be lovely. Uh, Boone, North Carolina. Um, but it is going to be, well, for lack of a better term, a slog. It's 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 going to be uh, a long, is that a word? Long slog? Is that right? Um, for, for things to get back to any kind of normalcy on a regular basis. But I heard some power was back. Um, internet was back. <laughs> um, unfortunately, they probably watched the game. Those people who got the internet and the power back. But I was telling somebody who's a big fan and a um, regular watcher, you know, you're going to sit there and not like a play call or a bad call against App State, and you're going to get mad about it, and you're going to be like, ooh, that actually felt pretty good because otherwise I'm dealing with this, and that stinks. Uh, all right, so we ran long in this segment. We'll do um, Arkansas State and Coastal in the last segment, and then we'll see if we can get to game management because I'll be the first to tell you I don't quite understand it. All right. Let's take a time out when we come back. We'll talk about Arkansas State's win over South Alabama, Coastal Carolina's win over Old Dominion, uh, and we'll see if we can get into game management. If not, we'll do that in another uh, episode later on in the week. Let me tell you about game time. Game time has a new feature called game time picks. That makes getting tickets for your favorite events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of uh, tickets. 
You want to see those great seats before you buy? Game time has those panoramic views from your seat in the app before you buy. You get that lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. And Game Time ticket coverage is per, is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. That's Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's game time. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sun Belt, your team every day. We are continuing to grow. All right. We're almost at 1,530 um, subscribers. Really appreciate it. I'm not sure if we set a record last week or not when we get to use the shorts. We'll see if we set a record uh, this coming week. Uh, we really appreciate all of the uh, support on uh, YouTube. All right. Uh, all right. Arkansas State. You know what? I'm going to do Coastal Carolina first because I want to talk about the game management with the Arkansas State South Alabama game. Coastal Carolina, what a ball game uh this was. ODU, I'll say Coastal Carolina wins 45 uh 37. But ODU led this ball game 17 to 7 and then found themselves trailing 35-17. That's let's see here. My understanding is that there would be no math, but that's 28 unanswered points for Coastal Carolina. Ouch. All right. So ODU scores a touchdown, makes it 17 to 7. Coastal comes back with a touchdown of their own. Now they're trailing 17-14. ODU gives up a touchdown on a fumble return. So Coastal's now up 21-17. ODU throws an interception at the end of the half. They go into half trailing by four, 21-17. Coastal comes out, scores a touchdown, 28-17. ODU punts. They actually, ODU actually stops Coastal on downs, but then two plays later, they fumble. And eight plays later, Coastal Carolina is leading 35-17. ODU responds. They don't go away. They did score a couple of touchdowns and got a stop. They pulled within 35-30, to but that was as close as ODU could get. Let's check out the box score. Uh, Ethan Vasco, 19 of 36 for 367 yards. Wow, three touchdowns. Christian Washington, eight carries, but 89 yards, averaging 11 per carry. Braden Bennett. Uh, nine for 48 on the ground with two touchdowns. Colton Joseph, apparently the new ODU quarterback, 22 of 40 with three touchdowns and an interception. Uh, Devin Roche, 12 carries, 86 yards and a touchdown. Uh, receiving wise for Coastal Carolina, how about Cameron Wright? Four catches, 148 yards and a touchdown. And on the other side, uh, Isaiah Page and Deontay Vines each had one score as well. For ODU, so Coastal Carolina goes uh, with the win. They go to four and one and one and zero in the conference. Uh, and a long season already gets longer for ODU. Um, and they've had opportunity after opportunity so far this season. They dropped to one and four and zero and one in the conference. All right, Arkansas State with you know what turns out to be an impressive victory, eighteen sixteen over South Alabama. The uh, the battle of true sophomore quarterbacks, Jalen Rayner, although I guess Gio Lopez could be, a, a, I guess he's redshirt freshman. Jalen Rayner, 30 of 39 for 345 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he did not, uh, he did run at eight carries, but that could have been minus eight. So he was sacked a, a handful of times. Uh, so defensively, South Alabama did a good job forcing Arkansas State to um, kick field goals most of uh, the night. Gio Lopez, 21 of 35, 292 yards, two touchdowns uh, and interception. Uh, he did have uh, basically a Hail Mary on third and 25 that ended up being a, a touchdown. Uh, Kentrell Bullock, uh, he ran uh, 13 times for 66 yards. I don't know if Fluff Bothwell was banged up. Nine carries, 32 yards. Uh, Gio, I don't remember too many running plays for him. He did run it a bunch though. 10 carries, 54 yards. Jamal Pritchett, seven receptions, 137 yards. On the other side, Corey Rucker, eight catches for 172 yards. Arkansas State did not run it uh, very much. They ran it 30, or didn't run it effectively. They ran it 30 times, 
and only had 66 yards. All right, so that's a big win for Arkansas State. They go to three and two, one and zero in the conference. South Alabama two and four. They are one and one in the conference. And this is where I want to talk about game management. And I will concede uh, some things here uh, because it's at the end of the ball game, and the 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 Cajuns. South Alabama is trailing 10 uh, to 9. About six minutes left to go when the Jaguars get the ball, okay? They get a couple of big plays. Uh, Gio Lopez, a completion to Jemiah Webb, 38 yards to the Arkansas State first down, but that's 522 to go. That's like on a second play of that drive. Um, but they end up getting a um, dump-off pass to Bothwell, for 12 yards, does run over a couple of guys, and it's Arkansas at the Arkansas State 11. So it's first and 10 at the Arkansas State 11 yard line. There's 2.10 to go. So what I will concede is it's not a field goal you're kicking to win it or tie it. You need the touchdown. So I get that. But don't you have to take the time into consideration? 2.10. I have two minutes and 10 seconds. I can actually get a first down. And maybe run more time off the clock. I don't know how likely that is. We used to do that way back when. And in television, I used to stop at the 11 or 12 yard line. So just in case I could get myself a first down if I couldn't get into the end zone way before Madden or Tech Mobile for that fact of the matter. Uh, I'm not expecting them to get a first down, but I got 210. I'm passing it on a first down. Doesn't take any time off the clock. The clock's going to stop at the two minute warning anyways. So why not run the football? And take some time off the clock. All right. Although in this case, it would only be 10 seconds. Uh, let's see where we are. Next play. Gio Lopez incompletion at uh, the two minute, 10 second. Ring. South Alabama penalty on second and 10. It goes full start. Now it's to the 16. All right. On second and 15, when you're kind of stuck, I get it. Gio Lopez pass incomplete. All right. So now, if you want to bet this one, they had first and 10 at the Arkansas State 11 with 2.10 left to go. They're snapping the ball with 2.03 on third down. Again, why is the clock not being taken into consideration? I don't even think the Cajuns, when they beat Wake, did a great job, but they were aware of it a little bit. On the first two plays, they sort of telegraphed, we're going to run it up the middle. If we break one, great, but... We're just trying to get a couple of yards, if anything. And then Ben Woldridge, which was effective against Southern Miss one time with a bootleg, he tried to run a bootleg against Wake, and it didn't work because they were going to try and kick that field goal um, with time winding down. Now, it ends up Wake Forest doinks one off the upright, so people may not remember it, but you got to take game management, especially in its tie ball game, into consideration. Now, it may be a little bit different, with South Alabama, because South Alabama, um, let me see here. South Alabama needed a, uh, they needed a touchdown. So then the craziness happened where it's third and 25 and Gio Lopez is throwing it up for grabs. I think Pritchett came down with it. Um, and then I don't understand the game plan. Let me see what time that was, how much time was left when he did that. 149. All right. Arkansas State gets the ball with 143. They need a they need a field goal to win. Defenders are 10 yards back and then backing up as if it's going to go over the head. What do I care if it goes over your head and they score? The faster they do that, the better because I get the ball back. Instead, 8 yards, 10 yards, 8 yards. I didn't understand this at all. Jalen Rainer, pass complete. Manny Stevenson, 8 yards. Jalen Rainer, pass complete. Manny Stevenson, seven yards. Jalen Rainer, pass complete. Courtney Jackson, seven yards. Jalen Rainer, pass complete. Jacquez Cross, nine yards. Jalen Rainer, pass complete. Corey Rucker, 11 yards. Pass complete to Corey Rucker, 11 yards. Pass complete to Jacquez Cross, eight yards. You know, that <laughs> it must may have been just like seven on seven. I think it may, may have been sideline South Alabama. If we bring a blitz, they pick up the blitz, and they get it over our head. We get the ball back with a minute and a half, or at least a minute. We South Alabama, you know, that'd be the point of playing an aggressive defense. They were playing like they had to get a touchdown when they only needed a field goal. And I didn't understand it. 
You know, and there's they're not the only team that does that, right? That happens in the pros. Go watch that Minnesota and Jets ball game. Same thing. Minnesota had awful game management at the end to go up by six, right? When if you know, why are we leaving Aaron Rodgers anytime whatsoever? Go get a first down, but they're passing. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And that's their head. They're not even losing. They're ahead. I don't get it. Some of this game management, uh, I, I really don't get it. I, I need, I don't care. Someone needs to explain it to me like a third grader. I don't get it. Now, a couple of times, we're going a little bit long here. A couple of times, because I want like South Alabama to run it. They got away from the running game. I didn't think Arkansas State could stop them running. Okay. A couple of times, Arkansas State did stop them running. And hats tip to them. Because sometimes the other team's going to make a play. I get it. That's football, right? I say I, do, I don't believe in the whole, if we do us for 60 minutes, we'll be fine. Well, the other team thinks the same thing. So when, you know, somebody stops uh, the South Alabama running game or the Cajuns running game, it's a good play. Not when you telegraph it, by the way, though. Not when you have a bunch formation and hand it off up the middle. That doesn't, <laughs> that's not impressive. But a couple of times there are one-on-one tackles and, you know, Arkansas State made some plays. I still think they went away from they went away from the the, the running game. I, I would have kept them uh, kept them in that defense that you know they should have been able to run the football and they and they and they went away from it. So I didn't understand the going away from the run offense. I didn't understand the game management with first and ten on the Arkansas State eleven, and I certainly didn't understand the defense. That's not to take anything away from Arkansas State because they battled and they got a nice win. And I would tell you that Arkansas State probably didn't think they played all that well either. The running game was awful. Uh, they moved up and down the field all game long, but couldn't put it in the end zone until the end of the game. So um, there's that. So that's my rant. <laughs> that's my little uh, weekend rant. I'm just frustrated. I don't understand uh, some of the game management, and it can be on the, on the college level or uh, the pro level. You know, I just I don't understand it. We'll see if someone – comes on here to uh, explain it to me because um, I don't, I don't get it. All right. We will, uh, we'll hopefully put out the, uh, the uh, lockdown Sunbelt signal to have a guest or two on. We already have one guest uh, coming on. Uh, we'll let Bryant Vincent do his thing. He's been kind enough to come on a couple of times already. He will be in demand. I'm sure he'll get uh, once everybody is done with a uh, Alabama and Vanderbilt and Clark Lee, they'll go on to Bryant Vincent because um, probably should mention this in the top spot uh, again. And he is mentioning it all the time. So I'm not the only one labor uh, harboring on it. They were 134th. They were the worst team in college football coming into the season. They are the biggest surprise in college football, period, end of story. Nobody else is nearly as big a surprise as ULM. And right now, they are Sunbelt West contenders. There's not a game on that schedule they can't win. They will be favored against Southern Miss. They may be favored, certainly won't be big underdogs against South Alabama. And if they win those two ball games, they'll be favored against Texas State. They may even be favored against the, well, you know, if they keep on winning, they're certainly going to be favored against the Cajuns. I want to see if they're favored. They won't be favored against Auburn. They just won't be. But it'd be very interesting to see. I mean, that should be a 14 to 17 point favorite for Auburn. We'll see. Don't lose that one, Zach Blackerby. <laughs> don't don't be losing the ULM at home, baby. <laughs> oh my God! If you think Auburn fans are nuts now, wait till that happens. Uh, all right, um, it's a big week. We're actually going to Fred and Freddie Knows House on Tuesday, so hopefully we will get the uh, the episode uh, done. Actually, I think we're going to be done. We got to get the episode for Wednesday done. So we'll see what we can do. Maybe a couple of guests uh, can help me out. Uh, with the early betting lines and such like that. All right, really uh, long episode, good episode, a little bit of a rant at the end. Uh, I mean, you guys may tell me I'm nuts, but I just don't understand some of the game management that's going on um, with football these days. I, you know, it's just too easy to go down the field and score. Sometimes defenses make it look hard. Other times they don't. It's just too easy these days. Uh, all right, again, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, everyone, I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, by the way, Started out the weekend six and oh, finished the weekend six and three. I should have faded my own bets. <laughs>
because those three were in a parlay. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that later in the week. Uh, have a great week, everybody. Again, thanks for all your support. You've been watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team, every day.